Hi lovely people, welcome to Bath Fashion's YouTube channel. My name is Eunice. Thank you for being here. If this is your first time on my channel, please kindly hit on the subscribe button to subscribe. And if you're already a subscriber, thank you so much for coming back. In this video, we're going to be learning how to make this beautiful blouse with V neckline and a standing collar, popularly known as our mandarin collar or bishop collar, some call it. It's a V-neckline blouse with collar. I hope this is something you are interested in learning. Kindly stay tuned while we get right into the tutorial. Thank you. So here I folded my fabric into two already on the table. And I used the biggest circumference I'm working with to determine the amount of fabric to fold. The hip is the biggest and I divided the hip by 4 plus 2 inches. So that's what determined the amount of fabric I folded. And that is 15 inches in all. 13 is quarter of the hip measurement plus 2 inches. So that's why I have 15 inches. So this is me reconfirming my 15 inches. Can you see? I have my 15 inches. So next I'm going to draw the starting line which is also the shoulder line. And then I'll enter half of the shoulder measurement of my client. And then I'll come down by one inch at that point and connect it to my three inches. This is just to achieve the shoulder slant. If you have been watching my videos, you should be used to this by now. Next, I came down by the armhole measurement, which is nine inches. So at where I marked my nine inches, this is me just reconfirming half of her shoulder measurement plus half inch for joining the sleeve. So you can see, I'm now going to connect my lines together. So now we have our chest line here, which is also known as the armhole line. The next thing I'll do is to mark the full length of the blouse. And that's 28 inches. So you want to make sure you reconfirm it so that it's a straight line. So having done that, the next thing now we want to do is to get the midpoint of the armhole, which is going to be 4.5. And then I'll go in by three quarter of an inch at that point. I'll connect it back to the shoulder tip like this. And then next, I'll enter quarter of the bust measurement on the chest line or the armhole line. And then plus my two inches for sewing allowance. Next, I'll go ahead and mark the waistline. So her waistline is 17.5. Just going to rule a straight line here. And then I'll enter a quarter of the waist measurement plus 3 inches. 2 inches is for our sewing allowance. 1 inch is for that. So marking at 3 inches. And then I'll come down to the hip line and enter a quarter of the hip measurement plus two inches okay i'm just going to go ahead and connect my points so i'm going ahead to connect from the waistline to the bust line that's to the chest line rather and then to the hip line which is the full length so right now i'm going ahead to cover out the armhole all you need to do is let the armhole touch the bust measurement can you see how it's touching the bust measurement so at the side here i'll go up by two inches this is to just give the hem of the gown that of the top that curvy look okay so i'll get the midpoint of the measurement i have there on the hip line or on the hem line and then i'll go ahead and use my hip curve to create a curve just want to give it that nice curvy look so i really don't like what i have now so that's why i'm turning the curve to the other side just to give it that nice curve so just feel free to curve it the way you want so you can see that from the hemline i went down to with about half of an inch can you see just to give it that nice curve so i haven't done this now so the next thing i want to do is to mark the neck width and the neck width I'm going to be working with is going to be 3.5. So 
so i marked four inches i'm changing it to 3.5 it's 3.5 i want okay and then the neck depth i'm working with is six inches so i'm going to create a v neckline just want to use this part of your curved ruler that's not so curvy and you see so this is what i have okay so i haven't done this so this is the actual measurements for the front so i'm going to be marking the back measurements that's the back neckline and the back armhole here this is just to make cutting of the back easier than it is or is very easy rather so right now i'm going to mark the arm the back arm who remember i came in by three quarter of an inch so at this midpoint i'll also come in by half of an inch so that i have the front and back armhole here on this piece this will make my work faster and easier okay so right now this is the back armhole i'm marking so for the front i came in by three quarter of an inch for the back i just came in by half of an inch so i'm coming here now to mark the back neckline also so for the back neckline i'll be coming down by half of an inch remember by one inch rather so remember that we're going to be using we're going to be attaching a collar to this so since i'm marking on one inch by the time i use half inch to join my shoulders i'll be left with half of an inch which will make the back high so i'm cutting out the back neckline and i'm also going to be cutting out the back armhole right now so when we are done adapting the back we can now go ahead and cut the front properly so this is me cutting the shoulder slant out and then i'm going ahead to cut the sides so you can see the armhole area can you see that i cut only on that i cut on the half inch i didn't go into the three quarter of an inch which is the front armhole so i'm going ahead to cut the hem you just want to follow the curve so that this curve comes out really nice and beautiful okay so right now you can see that we have our back piece at the moment that's without a zip allowance so i'm going to fold over my fabric and give it a nice press then we'll place it to cut out the back and then we'll go ahead and adapt the piece we have to become the front so after pressing my fabric i brought in the front piece and i've placed it over the back piece right now you can see that i placed it some inches inwards the what i have here at this point is at that point i where i went in is 1.5 inches and this 1.5 inches is for my zip allowance so now this is me marking the waistline can you see i marked the waistline and i went in by half of an inch this is to eliminate zipper bulge so this is just the basic bodies if you have been watching my videos this will not be strange so I just came in by half of an inch on the waistline and I've eliminated my zipper bolt. And you can see that I'm extending the back neckline right now. Can you see? Just so that it comes all the way to the end of the zip allowance. Like I said that we're going to use that piece to adapt our back and then we'll go ahead and cut out the necessary parts to use it as our front. So this is me cutting out the zipper bolt so can you see that the back now is now inwards a little around there this is just to eliminate zipper bolt so i'm going ahead to cut the shoulder slant and then i'll also cut the armhole and then i'll also go ahead and cut the side so basically i'll be cutting the same thing all the way down and then i'll show us how to trim out all the excesses we need to trim out for the front to have our front because right now what we are doing are back pieces okay so right now we have our back pieces and you see so i'm going up from the center back that's from the zip allowance point can you see i'm just going up by one inch at that point i just want to give it that nice balanced curve i don't want it to be straight and long at that point so i want it to just go in a little 
so that's why i trimmed out that part so right now you can see that we have our two back pieces and this is me just marking the wrong side of my fabric basically so i'm going to keep this aside now i'll go ahead and cut the back the front armhole and the front neckline so i'm starting with the front neckline and see now we have our front v neckline and then we'll go ahead and cut the front armhole so it's that simple so once we're done with this the next thing we're going to go ahead and do is to cut our lining so we'll cut our lining and we're going to be making the lining half inch shorter so can you see what i have this is what my front piece looks like so like i said earlier that this is a basic bodies i'm making these are my style inspiration and you see this on the mannequin and the one the model is wearing is actually a bustier so you can actually make it a bustier or a basic but it's just feel free to do what you want the first one on the mannequin looks more like a basic bodies i'm not very sure but for me my client says she wants a basic body she doesn't want a bustier so that's why i'm making a basic bodies so feel free to do what you want to do if you want yours to be a basic bodies all you need to do is to cut a basic bodies like i'm doing if you want yours to be a bustier please feel free to cut your bustier so now i have my linings cut out already can you see and here are my back pieces then this is my front piece so can you see that i've already done my embroidery in front of my in front of the front piece i gave my embroidery guy and he has done the embroidery so this is what he was able to make for me and it came out really nice okay so now we have our lining can you see so the next thing we're going to do now, we're going to be sewing the sides, okay? But before I go ahead and sew the sides, you can see that my embroidery is reaching the waistline. So I'm not going to be sewing that on this basic bodice. So I'm going to be taking out my dart from the waistline. Remember that we added one inch for our dart. So for the back, the back will still have the dart, but... For the front i'm going to be taking out this dart because i won't sew that on this outfit because i already have my embroidery done on top of it so now on the waistline i came in by one inch which is the dart i added i'm going to slant it to the chest line can you see i just came down and then you can see i'm slanting it to the hip line also which is almost the hem of the blouse so i'm just going to trim out the dart so this is what i would have had if i had sewn my dart so can you see so i'm just cutting out the dart so i'm going to be making the front that less okay so i'll repeat the same thing for the lining i'll also take out the dart from the lining and then i'll show us the next thing to do so right now i've stitched my lining to the main fabric you can see these are my back pieces I didn't stitch the neckline because we're going to be sewing our collar to the neckline. So can you see that the neckline is still open? I only sewed the sides. I only stitched the sides and the hem. So I left the neckline open. So the next thing you want to do now is to fold it into two like I'm doing. And then I'm going to measure where the collar will stop. So you can see that the back is completely open alongside the zip allowance. I didn't fold my zip allowance inside. So I'm taking my measurement from the zip allowance down to the front neckline to determine where I want my collar to stop. And I'm marking at 8 inches here. So this is where we want the collar to stop. And then the V neckline will extend. So I haven't gotten my 8 inches. I'm going to bring in the Ankara fabric I'll be using to achieve the color and then i'll go ahead and fold it into two like this can you see having folded my fabric into two like this so i'm going to be marking on 18 inches when we measured our color we got eight inches we need sewing allowance of half inch on both sides that's half half and that will give us one that's nine inches 
so and i need two of this color so that is why i'm going to be cutting on 18 inches so that we can divide it into two and have nine inches on both sides so right now i'm going ahead to mark the length of the collar including the sewing allowance and that is two inches i want by the time i'm done sewing this collar i'll be left with one and quarter inch so that is why i'm marking on two inches and you can see that i'm cutting exactly on my two inches so by the time i stitch up and down i'll be left with one and quarter inch so i'm just going to fold this collar into two now so that i can divide it into two and i'll have nine inches each okay so can you see so i've divided my collar now so i have for both sides so you can see i have two pieces okay and they are both nine inches in width so having done that i'm going to get one side so the side that will be to the front i'll just go up by half of an inch at that part i want to just create a nice curve around there remember that we're sewing it to a v neckline you don't want to just leave it straight whether it is a round neck you don't want to leave the front of your collar just straight if not it will not sit well so you can see so I've gone up by half inch and I got the midpoint of the collar that's of the entire fabric which is going to be 4.5 so that half inch I went up by I connected it to the 4.5 just watch what I'm doing carefully so can you see that my collar is no longer straight so you notice that the part that will be sewn to the front side is shorter and it has curve you understand this kind of curve is not straight okay so I'm going to iron my gum stay to the fabric and then i'll go ahead and divide it into two and you see so i'll also repeat the same thing for the other piece i'm going to also divide it into two so and then i'll go ahead and stitch it on both sides right side facing right side so you can see you want to make sure that the curved side is facing the curved side. You don't want to make any mistake of sewing it wrongly. So I'll be sewing on quarter, like a little more than quarter inch, not up to half inch. I also have the three corners that you can see me pointing at. And then I'll bring it down from the down part. I'll bring it out from the down part. I beg your pardon. So can you see? I'll stitch it at that side and then I'll bring it, turn it out from the down part. So I'll go and stitch it and come back and show us. I brought it out from this one. I pressed it. So this is what I have. So the next thing I'm going to do, I'll be placing it from the center back, which is from the zip allowance here. So I'm going to place it this way. So can you see that it's stopping exactly at the point where I marked my eight inches so this is what i have can you see take note that i pinned it on only the fabric excluding the lining so now the next thing i'm going to do i'm going to turn it in this is so that the lining can cover it up can you see so now you can see that i now have my lining on this side so this is what i'll be doing i'm going to first stitch it down to the main fabric then I'll bring in my lining like this and sew the lining. Now I'll be doing the same thing for the other side. I'll be sewing the, the collar first to the main fabric. This is so that when I'm sewing the lining, I can completely turn the whole neckline. You can see that the neckline is open. So, so that when I'm done sewing this and I have this intact, I can now completely turn the whole neckline with my lining. So I'll go and do that and come back and show us. So I've sewn the neckline, you see, and this is my collar on the right side. So take note that on my lining, I apply gum stay. I iron gum stay. This is to give the neckline stability, even though I did embroidery, which they also used gum stay. So I'm going to go ahead now and notch the neckline around, or notch around the neckline so that everything relaxes well. Then I'll give it a good press and show us what we have. So as you can see, I've ironed the neckline and this is what my collar looks like. And you see that it's aligning. No one is longer than the other. 
it stopped exactly at the eight inches mark i marked and this is what i have at the back i also went ahead to iron the neckline i put my hemming gum in between the lining and the fabric so this is to keep it intact so you can see what we have and i've also sewn my darts on the back piece remember i said we're not sewing that on the front so we're only sewing our darts at the back i've sewn my darts so the next thing that i'm going to do is to sew my zipper to the zip allowance then i'll go ahead and fix my sleeve and show us what our blouse looks like so here we are this is the outcome of our blouse and it came out really beautiful can you see how our collar is sitting well on the neckline and you can see our beautiful sleeve also i actually made a detailed video on how to achieve this beautiful sleeve and i've posted it already on my channel i'll be dropping the link in the description box so that you can watch and learn how to make this sleeve just in case you haven't seen the video so we have come to the end of this video i hope you enjoyed watching this video and you learned a thing or two from this video please like this video share this video with your friends and do not forget to subscribe to my channel and also put on your notification bell so you get notified once i post a new video thank you for watching see you in my next one bye